Before we begin the sketch, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon supporters. So a big thank you to Hixia, Sparky, Beer Nuts, Trep, Esky, and Anathiel. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm in danger. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just Quack. What's up gamers, it's Treesap Jake here with yet another video and today's video is going to be my rated battleground guide for Elemental Shaman in patch 9.0.5. There's just a few differences with my main guide, my in-depth Elemental Shaman guide for Shadowlands that I just want to go over and I want to talk about, especially with changes to conduits, especially with regards to talents and just general play style and legendaries of course. So let's get stuck in. One of the few changes that I just want to talk about that isn't in my in-depth guide is the swap from Earth Shield to Spirit Wolf. Now, one of the big things in Wraith's Battlegrounds is having a lot of mobility, being able to move around and get to places. In this, also, you also have three healers healing you, multiple healers and lots of off specs and everything else. So in regards to self-healing, Earth Shield isn't as useful. In fact, instead, I switch over to the Spirit Wolf talent. Now, I'll just tell you what the Spirit Wolf talent does. Whilst transformed into a Ghost Wolf, you gain 5% increased movement speed and 5% damage reduction every one second, stacking up to four times. The damage reduction isn't amazing. It's pretty good for like if you wanted to kite and just let your healer heal you whilst you just remain very tanky. But the main thing is this movement speed. Now the movement speed allows you to get places very, very quickly. And it allows you to run off, peel off, go and help, get to places where you need to go. If you're in combat, just get away. And also if that damage reduction does help you not die, I guess, to affliction warlock dots, which can sometimes, if you don't have any dispel for it, kill you as you run away. And that's not great. So I switched to the Spirit Wolf talent here and I found that it is very, very useful. If you want to get the full lowdown on the talents that I use and the reasons why I'm using them, you can check out the in-depth Elemental Shaman Guide, nothing has changed there. In terms of the PvP talents, I wanted to go over why I'm staying the same way here. One of your roles as an Elemental Shaman is to stop Convokes, and in order to stop Convoke, especially when they're using Aura Mastery where no one can kick them, the only strong way to stop it is either CC, so Incap Raw, Incapacitating Raw, a stun, whatever, but if nobody's got one of those and the, and the guy's really, really far back, what you can do is press a simple button of Grounding Totem, and Grounding Totem seals all your problems. It lasts for three seconds, and that's about as long as a Convoke. If you time it well, you should catch most of it, and if you're in the midst of your players, and as long as they're in range of the Grounding Totem, you should be totally fine. And that's one of the big advantages you have for bringing an Elemental Shaman into your Roasted Battleground group. I just want to talk very quickly about Covenants. I still think Necrolord is the best Covenant for Elemental Shaman in RBGs. I think the Venthyr ability is great, but it only really benefits for Enhancement with Maelstrom Weapon buffing it so much and making it so devastating as an instant cast. That's a really good way to one-shot flag carriers and everything like that, and it makes Enhancement a bit more viable. But for Elemental Shaman in RBGs, I don't think it's worthwhile. It does a fair amount of damage, but not nearly as much as Enhancement, and if you're a Resto Shaman, for example, being uh, an, a Venthyr, then it could actually possibly work there just as an extra healing ability when you're kicked, for example. That's very, very good but otherwise I wouldn't really see it as being beneficial for Elemental Shaman. There's lots of synergies with Elemental Shaman that work so well with Necrolord and I think it allows you to pump really hard, pump really hard single target damage which is the reason why you're there to really get the kills. So going quickly into conduits, these are the conduits that I would tend to run, and this is the reason why. So first of all tumbling waves, it's a big chance to reset primordial wave it's vital, really, and when you proc that, it allows you to spread your Flame Shock really easily. If you've got an, uh, an Infliction Warlock and the enemy team as well, you're going to make sure that Flame Shock is up on your main targets and up on the UA targets as well. You'll be able to tell where what's going on with that one, and you'll be able to keep your Flame Shocks up. With the amount of Dispels, though, going, it can be quite tough to keep Flame Shock going, but this allows you to at least keep it on the main target with a, an undispellable dot on there. Vital accretion is also really, really important. Having an Earth Ellie that increases your maximum health means that you can get Earth, earth Ellie out, especially with your greater primordial. You'll be able to have that out and giving you that buffed healing. It's pretty much a free five minute BM trinket. It's really great, very useful. I think this is probably one of the best 
defensives that you can get, but it's just a way of keeping yourself out. Something to bear in mind though, and something that I learned the hard way playing into people like Bobby DK, is that if you're going up against Frost DK, do not press it when you want to get that out as a way of defensive, they will just press chill streak and that doesn't end well. So just a bit of tips, tips and trick there. My last potency one is going to be using Call of Flame. And the reason why I'm going for Call of Flame is that Fire Ellie lasting longer means a lot more damage output. The damage output you can do with Ellie, Fire Ellie is quite big. I often have it out and do it does a lot of damage. Uh, it tends to out damage a lot of the other elemental shamans if I am playing this one and I think it's actually probably the best one to do. You could, of course, I think, maybe play with high voltage, allowing your lightning bolt when you're pressing Stormkeeper or just in general to generate a, a double the amount of Maelstrom if you want to get out some more Earth Shocks. But in general, I think Call of Flame and the damage that Fire Ellie does is actually really perfect. The last one and probably the most vital one to go for is Thunderous Paws. Now we've talked about the reason why we're playing the Spirit Wolf talent. Now Thunderous Paws works in synergy with this. Ghost Wolf increases your movement by an additional 21% for the first three seconds. This allows you to jump away and get away from people very, very quickly. Get out of the team fight, start speeding away if you need to. And obviously with the Spirit Wolf, you'll have that decay happening though with the, you know, for, for Thunderous Paws. And then you'll also have the increased speed and you'll get away and it'll make you fast. It allows you to get places that you need to go and allows you, obviously, you know, you can't be slow below, below 100% so you will be able to get away and you'll get to places before people can really slow you and then you'll be able to zoom zoom and that's the main thing getting places and having mobility stop stop what you do right now and listen to me don't forget guys if you want more content like this please like and subscribe that's click the thumbs up button press the subscribe button and press the bell if you're feeling really generous all right you can get back to the video now so we've talked about talents we talked about pvp talents we talked about conduits and your covenant i want to now talk about legendaries now i have been a very big advocate for wind speakers lava resurgence and i think it's a very useful ability that gives you a lot of utility and makes life a lot easier especially when you're learning however for rated battlegrounds you want to become a turret and the best way to become a turret is by using elemental equilibrium now the reason why elemental equilibrium is so great is because you've got that damage buff for 10 seconds happening every 30 seconds and pretty much you can rotate it with echoing shock to either use it on your big stormkeeper goes with lava burst or with the big earth shock now that we're 9.0.5 Five, you can use this as a way to put out a lot of pressure and for an elemental shaman when you're competing with the likes of boomkins competing with the likes of warlocks and stuff like that this allows you to be competitive and really do a lot of damage wind speakers is still good and i've used wind speakers all the way up to two three and i don't think that's a problem i think wind speakers is a great legendary however for this and i think elemental equilibrium at this point is probably the better legendary right now just for doing more damage Unlike Arena with Rated Battlegrounds, you get a lot of time to just sit back and do some damage and focus on your CC, focus on kicking, etc, etc. And I think this Legendary allows you to become a turret, allows you to become destructive and powerful. It is actually very scary to QNT. So the final bit we're going to talk about is just some tips and tricks to help you get started in Rated Battlegrounds and understanding what your role is. In Rated Battlegrounds, you have a very specific role. You are a disruptor. The Shaman has always had the lowest kick cooldown for uh, as long as I can remember. Wind Shear is probably one of the best ones. And so in order to give you some tips and tricks and kind of general play style, this is what I'd recommend. As an Elemental Shaman, your role is really to stop a lot of the CC. You're to stop the Convokes, you're there to stop all of the big damage cooldowns as much as you can. You're a purge bot, you can get through a lot of things, you can get rid of the, you can purge divine favor and kick people. It is an incredible versatile class and I think very, very underrated maybe in rated battlegrounds, but it's a, it's a beautiful class to play and just so much fun. As an elemental shaman, you have one of the best single target damage in the game. You are essentially a mobile ranged rep paladin at times and although the boomkin has a lot of damage with convoke and star surges you have the most consistent amount of single target burst so what does that mean for your role in the game well essentially every minute or so you can do a big stormkeeper go and every 30 seconds you can use echoing shock with your elemental equilibrium legendary to do a lot of damage and also you have lasso every 30 seconds and you have primordial wave every 45 seconds and so it all lines up within a minute to be a lot of damage so how do you quantify the best thing of this well essentially what you want to do is when you're in a rated battleground you want to make sure that you are working with your target caller either using your lasso on the kill target or using your stormkeeper and your big lava burst to help finish the kill so essentially you want to listen to out when to the target caller is making the swaps when he makes the swaps make sure that you are hexing a healer 
or you're CCing a healer or using your anything to kind of keep the DPS at bay. And then you pop your Stormkeeper, you press Primordial Wave, and then you start casting Lava Burst and you do this uh, most single target damage that you possibly can on the kill target. Try not to use this in uh, a wasted go without anyone else. You need to make sure you're coordinated with your team. And whilst our burst is massive, it works best when you're doing it with a target caller. If a target caller is calling a swap, counting down from 5, make sure that you're using that time to either CC a healer or prepare your burst. If you CC a healer, that's great, that means that they are locked down and unable to help whoever you're going on, whether it's a DPS or another healer in that case. And then for the remaining time, cast Stormkeeper and start casting Lava Burst. Coordinate with your target caller to make sure that you're lassoing off some of his goes so that you have that big pressure. And don't forget to press Sky Fury too. If you are interested in more of a specific Elemental Shaman playstyle, I am uploading a lot of RBG content to my Patreon. On my Patreon, if you pay for the ultimate, so you become an alpha monkey and become the, the highest tier up there, there will be videos up on there that where I go into detail about my choices that I make when I'm in Rated Battlegrounds, my playstyle, what I go for, what I look for, and how I interact with my teammates, as well as a little bit of advice on running your own and being the best Elemental Shaman you can in the Rated Battleground bracket. So guys, that's the, that's the video. That is a very quick Rated Battleground guide for Elemental Shaman. Obviously, if you are interested in a more in-depth Elemental Shaman gameplay, please check out my in-depth guide. That has absolutely everything in there. And from there, you can basically translate it and how it works with Rated Battlegrounds. I put a lot of video content out with me playing, but if you want me to go over the specific details, as I said, it's all on my Patreon. Otherwise, guys, make sure that you like the video, subscribe to me, give me a thumbs up, give me all the support you can, go follow me on Twitter, join the Discord, join our wonderful community and if you're feeling super generous do support me on patreon but otherwise guys i'll catch you in the next video see ya